So for a while now, dual core processors have not been great for gaming, but in some cases, they are actually a decent way to get yourself onto a modern platform. And that's the case with AMD's Athlon 3000G. At $55, it's basically the cheapest way to get yourself onto the AM4 platform. And from there, the great thing about AMD's current ecosystem is you can upgrade clear up to something like a 3950X, provided of course that you have power and a motherboard that can actually support pushing that type of power to a processor, but today we're going to take a different look at the 3000G because it does have integrated graphics. It can run some games, though the experience is definitely not going to be the best, but what if it was a system that you basically started on? Maybe you put it together so you could play like League of Legends or something, but now you actually want to upgrade it a little bit so you can play some more modern games or just generally some more graphically demanding games. That's what we're going to be testing today. Now, depending on where you actually pick, oh, Jack, what's up? Now, depending on where you actually pick up the 3000G, it's gonna cost you around $55 new. If you're paying any more than that, then you are getting ripped off because there are some very good options on the AM4 platform altogether that don't cost much more than $55. And I'm not even really sure that I would recommend actually picking one of these 3000Gs up, even at $55, but that's the discussion for a different time. But suffice it to say, you're gonna pay about $55 for one of these things brand new. Obviously, the used market may give you a little bit of a discount and for today's purposes we are actually going to be sort of uh, teaming this processor up with a gpu that i think is well suited for this type of processor but definitely not really wanting to go over this gpu's pairing with this processor i know poor articulation but the point being we are putting a gtx 1650 with the athlon 3000g now we are running the athlon 3000g at 4.0 gigahertz and running with memory 16 gigabytes dual channel at 3200 megahertz so we're giving this thing a good chance to actually give us a decent performance on the gaming front now the rationale behind the gtx 1650 is basically just that it cost me 120 dollars plus tax to get this GPU, and that was through EVGA's B stock deals. And basically, if you're gonna be going any higher than a 1650, and this actually worked out fairly well in the testing, you're actually gonna to wanna to upgrade the CPU as well, just because uh, the Athlon 3000G is definitely gonna be bottlenecking even this GPU in certain titles, or at least giving you a subpar experience in some cases. But it is time to actually put some numbers to those statements. So let's go ahead and hop over to the gaming experience on several different games that are, at least for the most part, relevant games in 2020, and take a look at just how well this thing does paired with that GTX 1650. Starting off with Metro Exodus, we saw an average FPS of 72, a 1% low of 51, and a 0.1% low of 45. And in this title, this actually performed just fine. The experience was smooth for the most part. There may have been a couple of very tiny stutters here and there, but for the most part, this CPU actually does seem to do a solid job with Metro Exodus, which, as long as you're leaving Tessellation off, is actually a solidly performing game. Next up was the fan favorite Fortnite, and once again, we actually had a really solid experience here with 86 average FPS, 60 on the 1% low, and 34 on the 0.1% low, so we were actually experiencing a little bit of stuttering here and there, but once again, for the most part, this is a perfectly playable title, and there's no reason not to pair a 1650 with the 3000G in this case. On to Overwatch, and this game was sort of a mixed bag. The average FPS here was 93, a 1% low of 54, but that 0.1% low of 27 sort of betrays the problem, and that is that there was definitely some stuttering throughout gameplay. It definitely was worse when you first load into a level, or into a game rather, but it was definitely there, it was noticeable, and it does take away from the gameplay, and that really was my concern with this 3000G paired with anything of relevance as of a gaming GPU in 2020, and that's that the CPU is really starting to get in the way, especially for games that are really optimized for lots of cores and lots of threads. A lot of times it's just too heavy for a quad thread processor like this 3000G with just two physical cores. It's just difficult for this CPU to keep up with modern games, and that's starting to bear out a little bit here in Overwatch. Resident Evil 2 Remake was a solid experience in my testing here at 70 FPS average, a 1% low of 43, and a 0.1% low of 33. There weren't any sort of major stutters going on with the time I was in this game with the CPU paired with the 1650, so we get a pass here. 
But then we move to by far the most graphically demanding game on this list, and that is The Outer Worlds, where we saw an average FPS of 56, a 1% low of 31, but the 0.1% low was the real concern here. And this is gonna be representative of a lot of modern games that are demanding in general. We see that 0.1% low of just nine FPS. So even once the game was fully loaded up, everything seemed to smooth out for a bit, you would hit a pretty hard stutter. And that was pretty much the entire time I was in the Outer Worlds here. And again, that's gonna be indicative of modern titles that are graphically demanding, but also especially ones that really hit the CPU. I don't have Red Dead Redemption 2 right now, but I suspect that this would be another game where the 3000G would definitely uh, stutter and, and really just not give you a great gaming experience. So I and probably many of you actually saw the conclusion coming from a mile away with the Athlon 3000G and that's basically this is not a chip geared towards uh, AAA gaming here in 2020. This is a chip geared towards getting you off and running with a solution to get your PC up and running and it's a great solution if you're looking for a computer that just basically does day-to-day -day tasks. You know web surfing, email, basic word processing, that sort of thing. But for heavier tasks and that would include AAA gaming, you're going to want to upgrade from a 3000G. Now the nice thing here is AMD platform on the AM4 socket gives you a lot of options even towards that lower end of the pricing where you can find Ryzen 1600s for around $100 right now. I know that the AF variant of the 1600 was briefly available for about $85 but you can find cheap processors on the AM4 socket especially if you're willing to look in the used market for right around the same cost as the Athlon 3000G that will give you much better and smoother gaming performance. And if you already have a 3000G and you're looking to pair it with an actual GPU while you maybe save up some money for a better processor. I don't know that I would pair it with much stronger than a GTX 1650. In fact, a GTX 1650 in a lot of cases is not gonna be the bottleneck. You'll notice in the gameplay, a lot of the times the CPU was basically pinned on my testing to 100% or very near 100%. So if you're looking to pair a GPU with the 3000G, don't really go for anything crazy powerful unless you're looking to upgrade the CPU in the very near term as well. Otherwise, stick to something like a 16. 50 or lower end to get you up and running on some modern games, but maybe not pushing it crazy hard. But that's my thoughts on this Athlon 3000G. It's a great low end processor, but definitely keep your expectations in check with it. The nice bit is it is unlocked, unlike the Athlon 200GE, which was kind of de facto unlocked by uh, uh, motherboard makers after the fact. But the 3000G is unlocked on all B350, B450, X370, X470, X570 motherboards basically everything except your A320 motherboards. You're going to be able to overclock this thing. It's not a hot processor, so you should actually be able to get a pretty solid overclock on these. It is on the Zen Plus architecture, not the Zen 2 architecture. So don't be looking for 4.3 gigahertz out of this thing. You're probably going to be able to get 4.0, 4.1 if you're really lucky, maybe 4.2 gigahertz. But that's my thoughts. I want to know your thoughts. Let me know down below what you think about the 3000G. Is it something that you would even consider or would you uh, just go for a better gaming chip in general. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things helpful to the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Who's Your Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.